This video looks a bit different, so let's get into it. Hello and welcome to another speed painting where content's going to be changing around here. This doesn't look normal and it's not. <laughs> so here I am doing a, a bit of filigree drawing because I have an art assignment uh, in my school where we have to basically study an era of art and then we have to make a presentation about it. And you know, being the person that I am, I decided that I would make the slides reflecting the art era that my partner and I have to present, which would be the arts and crafts era. Now, when people say arts and crafts, they tend to think of DIYs, like stuffing pretzels into a marshmallow or putting a tissue on a lollipop. Some sort of DIY, it's kiddish, you know, all those things. That is not what the arts and crafts era is about. <laughs> so here I'm like doing some filigree because the, I want to say like the father of the arts and crafts movement, which was a movement that happened in the 1850s-ish, 60s-ish by a man named William Morris and some company of his, uh, he started this big huge movement in arts where he does a lot of repeating patterns, they reflect nature, especially plants, and it's this really like pretty um, piece. They're very, they're flourishing, you know, very ornate, decorative, and they are done by hand. So it's quite impressive, all right? Like, this is a digital piece, I'm doing this, and it takes me like an hour to do all the coloring and stuff. Just know that William Morris and his friends decorated a giant house, the interior, by hand. That is crazy. So if you're interested in the arts and crafts movement, uh, you'll want to look up William Morris and he's done this project, he's done a few projects, he's owned some press companies and whatnot, but he's done this project called The Red House and basically him and his friends from school, I say friends because uh, him and his company from school basically designed the interior decora decorations of this house that William Morris and his family was planning to live in. And it's a lot of repeating pattern done by hand, very fancy and whatnot. So I wanted to echo that into the slides. So we had to talk about what traits are uh, prominent in the style. And um, I thought it'd be really cool to start with a really plain, basic, skeletal slides. And when we get to the traits, they get fancier and we add like the traits as we go on. So the filigree wasn't really cutting it because our professor slash instructor told us to focus a bit more on these sort of his books basically. He made these books and he did like the hand drawings for all these books which is insane. But you see William Morris is a man who comes from a wealthy family. He went to Oxford for school and he had a lot of bloody time on his hand. Alright like this guy did these things by hand and this like the border alone took me like three hours to do and I only did half of it imagine doing a whole house so basically like it's this sort of medieval-ish uh, decor reflecting plants very intricate and all these things because he studied like uh, press basically and how to how medieval people has applied press and stuff so I'm like sketching the design out in white on black because it's a lot easier than doing it black on white and to do all these details so I cheated the the lovely uh, opportunities of being a digital artist so I cheated um, and yeah so it, it takes a really long time and the concept of arts and crafts isn't just the design itself, but it's this idea that people deserve to have quality pieces over quantity. 
So he like was against industrialization, he didn't want uh, art pieces and decorations to be mass produced, so he spends this whole time like working on handmade items and encouraging it, uh, which is very interesting because you see that nowadays where people are like buy local and buy from artists locally. Uh, so it's sort of coming back in that way. And it's very interesting to see how art movements can still influence uh, current times or how we come back to old beliefs and things like that. So um, I do the slideshow and you see, I'm like, okay, I could reuse the border because it's the same uh, decoration throughout the whole thing. And then I reached the other sections of the presentation, which is the modern uses of, um, of the style, the modern impacts, and like a thank you card because you gotta thank people for listening to your presentation that you've been droning on about. Um, so I was like, we can't just half ass this. We need to go all the way. So I end up doing a thank you slide and a so what slide. On top of that, I also had to do something called a drop capital, which is those really fancy or like different first letter of like a par uh, a page or a chapter or whatever. You'll see them, you see them often in like medievals and you'll see it here where you have to like, it's really fancy and ornate this style. So I had to do one of those and I did the letter T because traits of arts and crafts. I made sure from then on out when I was using these drop capital letters that the sentences started with T's <laughs> because like hell am I doing the whole alf alphabet in this design. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. Whew. If someone's like, something's a bit off about these slides, I can't put my finger about on it. I'm gonna be like, yeah, I, I, I can't imagine like what nut job would spend like three hours doing this for a slideshow presentation, a 15 minute slideshow presentation, crazy. And then I'll be nervously sweating in the corner. Anyways, it was really fun. Uh, once you get into it, it, it's fairly relaxing. It's just the initial like trying to get used to the flow and understanding the style. It's a bit rough. But yeah, I really enjoyed doing the style and that's something that I look forward in this class because we'll be doing art posters in different styles of different eras. And we get to choose like a media, like a movie, a TV show, or a musical or something to do it about. And initially I thought about doing Criminal Minds, but I think I'm going to do Heathers. Because Heathers, there's so many iconic things. Like Criminal Minds, it's like, it's a crime show and you do have iconic characters and whatnot. But since it's been going on for such a long time, the characters change. Especially like Dr. Spencer Reed, like his hairstyle changes, there's Rossi when he gets like in the later seasons, his hairstyle changes, cast members change in and out, and things like that. So yeah, I think I'm gonna stick with Heather as much as I love Criminal Minds. I'll stick with Heather because they do have a lot of iconic things in Heather, like the color scheme which is the green, blue, red, and yellow. They have iconic characters like Veronica, Heather, 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 Jason Dean. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, and like they have a lot of iconic scenes that I could pick from and sort of twist into my own uh, posters. So I look really forward to that. I am actually think, despite me being like, it took me forever to do this, I am thinking about doing arts and crafts for Heather, just because like, I just think, I don't know, it's just, it feels like it could be really cool, especially if I do like uh, a wine bottle spilling out with like vines of like grape vines tangling in and out of it or something. And then Art Nouveau would be really cool and like a few other eras. So yeah, I'm really excited for that project. I'm excited to try my hand at other styles because I don't, I don't try other styles. I'm a really bad artist. <laughs> Anyways, no. See, that's the thing. I think it's really important to try styles and like if, I think you know you've, 
you've reached a good part in your artistic ability when you can sort of take on someone else's style. There's nothing wrong with sticking to one style and sticking to your own style because it took like time for you to develop that own style. But I think like it's amazing when people can copy other people's styles as well. So yeah, um, I stole the font from Google since uh, he wrote with I want to say a fountain pen or a quill. It tends to have those taper lines and it tends to be blocky like medieval font. So those that's the font that I stole from Google and then I traced over and I um, used. It's called, I think it's called medieval slab font. And then I do also a thank you slide because I'm extra. <laughs> I'm extra, I say, as I always wear like black clothes because it's easy to dress. Anyways, so yeah, um, it's been really cool doing this project, and thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, end results are here. So framing for the slides, uh, we have the drop letter T. I also have the so what, and then thank you. And I thought that was fitting to put it at the end. Cheeky. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys all stay safe, stay hydrated, and have a wonderful day. Bye.